All right, everyone, I'm going to tell you some of the things that we've discovered that kill ESCs. This doesn't just apply to our ESCs, this applies to all the ESCs and what you can do to prevent it. I got a few ESCs here I'm going to use as an example and I also have some pictures that some people have sent me that we can use to you know demonstrate what kills the ESCs, what you can do to prevent it and from now on maybe you can help make your quads last longer, make these 4-in-1 ESCs last a little longer. Okay so the first thing I'm going to use is a flight controller to show you an uh, example of what happens on an ESC. Now because it's a, it's a flight controller the same thing still applies it's just the flight controller has a little bigger processor and uh, so it's easier for you guys to see. So if you look right here, you can see there's a hole clearly in this flight controller. Um, what's happened here is uh, there's these little pins and these pins are basically use zero to three volts, 3.3 volts uh, to send outputs and inputs into them. Now what happens is um, if some uh, if higher voltage than five volts hits these, it'll actually short the, the MCU and it'll actually fry it. And so what's happened here is someone or something or there's been some short that actually bridged full voltage into this MCU and it has caused this short which burned a hole in it. Um, you know an ESC has a little smaller version of this. If you look if you look at this ESC uh, basically um, one of these are FET drivers and one are MCUs. I believe this one's the MCU. So if you look right here these are the MCUs. There's four of them on here as well. Um, the same thing can happen to them. They can burn a hole in it. Uh, actually, I might have that backwards. I think that actually the, these are the MCUs. Yeah. So these are the MCUs right here. So there's four of these MCUs on here. And they, the same thing can happen. If, if basically you attach, you know, these, there's one pin from each one of these MCUs that comes out into here. If full, full VBAT hit this, um, you know, your LiPo voltage, it will fry these MCUs. Now, uh, this could happen for multiple reasons. You could like bend two pins together. Like if this, these three pins bent together right here inside the connector when you plugged it in, um, it could fry these MCUs. It could go, there's a cause a short between the ground and the battery or whatever for the MCUs. We try and have some separation here so that doesn't happen, but it's possible. So, you know, when you plug in your connector, make sure there's no pins bent. Um, so this is one way that these ESCs can fry. If somehow full voltage, uh, you know, something attached to this gets full LiPo, it'll fry this MCU. Um, so to be, you know, careful, just make sure when you're plugging in these that you um, don't bend any pins, don't push it, don't force it, and hopefully that'll help keep you from bridging the pads. The same thing on the other end, on the flight controller, you want to do the same thing um, on the flight controller. You want to make sure when you plug it in that uh, you don't bend any pins and, and be careful and use a smoke stopper. Although the problem with this is a smoke stopper will not stop it from frying. Uh, it, it can't trigger quick enough to save the MCU. The next way, the next way you can see these ESCs fry. Let's say you have an ESC, you plug it in, you get no tones. Uh, sometimes this happens right away. Sometimes it happens when you're flying. Uh, there's there's different reasons. There's different that the times this happens. But basically, the signs will be you have all your motors plugged in. You unplug everything from the ESC, but you plug it in. It makes no sounds. What's most likely happened is your ESC has some sort of short. Uh, basically, if there's a direct bridge in the MCU, it's not a big enough short that that it burned a hole in it, but it's a big enough short that it's pulling too much power. If you go ahead and connect it to a power supply. Um, you would actually, you could see it's draining a lot more power than it should, and that's how we know there's a short. Now, what we have theorized and what we believe happens when this happens is if you pull the wire out um, from the connector. So let's say you're, you know, your connector comes loose or you hit a crash in a crash or something along those lines and the connector comes loose uh, and it pulls the ground before it de-energizes the circuits the circuits need some place to dump that VBAT power. So what happens is it dumps it through one of the signal wires. This happens on RSCs. This has happened on other ESCs. Um, it's usually due to a crash or it hits real hard, but it needs some place for that power to go and the power ends up going through on the signals, which fries the MCU. And that will cause it not to make any sounds because none of the MCUs can get the power. Uh, so the things to do to prevent this, there's a couple things you can do. One, hot glue your connectors so they can come loose. 
Um, that's an important one. You want to make sure the, you know, the connectors can't come pull it out or partially pulled out. Another thing you can actually do is you can solder another ground wire from your flight controller to your ESC. That will help you know, give the ground some place to go that can't get this connected. Um, on our upcoming ESC, we actually have done something to prevent this. We're actually putting grounds on both sides of the connector. So what that's going to do is if one side comes, gets pulled out, the other side should stay connected. There's no real way for the ESC to get pulled out and not leave one of the grounds connected. So the ground will always be the last thing disconnected. So hopefully that'll preserve that from happening. Um, we're also doing a few other things to the ESCs to help prevent this as well. But not every brand is going to have that stuff done. In fact, most won't. So if your brand ESC that you've used has this happen, that's most likely what happened. Uh, the ground was pulled before the power was discharged. Maybe it pulled it out while it was still turned on or something along that line. And that's what's fried that ESC. All right, so the next thing that we've seen an ESC be fried with. Um, if you look at these ESCs, uh, they have a bunch of FETs here. These are MOSFETs. Basically what these things do is they act like switches. Uh, each ESC has three wires going to it, one, two, three, and it basically enables um, ground and power to two of these at any given time. And what these MOSFETs do is control, you know, these two get ground and power, these two get ground and power, or these two get ground and power for your three-phase motor. So what happens is if these get shorted, it will fry one of these MOSFETs. Sometimes you can see it's fried, it gets desoldered or there's a hole in it. Um, you know, that's a clear indication some of the MOSFETs went bad. Sometimes they fry in such a way where you can't see it. Now what happens is because there was a short and it fries these MOSFETs, most likely it's fried the motor or the motor's fried it. Usually we find the motors, especially cheaper motors, end up frying your ESC. So that's something to keep in mind. You may think you're getting this bargain brand motor, but that bargain brand motor actually uses too thin a wire or it connects or it's not built in such a way where the actual coils in the wire can touch and cause a short on your MOSFET. So that cheap motor where you save that five bucks a motor actually end up killing your $50 ESC. So that's why it's important to make sure you use high quality motors because it actually can has catastrophic things happen. Now, the, the biggest issue with this is if it does happen, you end up having, um, if you look inside your motor, you'll see black coils. Those black coils is the connect, the coating that's fried off the motor. So what usually tends to happen is the coating comes off the motor, two of those wires touch, they do a direct short, and it fries the ESC. Now, one of the funniest things about this, and it's kind of crappy, is if you go to switch that motor, you, go, you see that motor's fried, you see that black coil in the motor's fried, you, so you put a new motor in, that motor is then going to fry because what's happened is your MOSFET has been shorted and it's fried, so it's shorting the motor at this, um, every time you plug it in. So usually if you fry a motor, if you see black coils on a motor or you fry an ESC, you need to usually replace both things. Uh, using a smoke stopper will actually save your motors if you want to put another motor on there and test it. Usually that will prevent the motor from frying. So that's a good way to know if you need to replace your ESC or your motor. But if you see any black on your motor, more than likely you should throw out the motor and throw out the ESC because they've both been fried. Um, so that's another way that we've seen these ESCs get fried. Usually like maybe a motor binds, it overheats, you've turtle moded too much on it, you've overheated and melt the coating off. Uh, the thinner the wire, the thinner the coating, the, the cheaper the motor, usually the more likely the motor is to fry and take out your ESC with it as well. So keep in mind, uh, there's not much you can do to prevent this besides, you know, maybe buy some higher quality motors. Use motors maybe with some thicker wire. We don't like the dual strand stuff because uh, if you look, thicker wire lasts a lot longer than the two thin wires. Um, it, it causes desyncs, it causes motors to burn up, especially when you're pushing the limits on your KV versus motor um, output. Like if you're doing like 6S on you know, 2100 KV motors or 5S on 2300 KV motors, stuff like that, it's really pushing the limits of your equipment. So cheaper motors are going to fry much quicker and so are the ESCs. The higher you go in voltage, the more likely this is to happen as well. So that's one of the reasons you see 6S uh, causing some problems. Also, something to keep in mind for 6S as well is electricity jumps further the higher the voltage. So it's more likely to call it hit, um, it's more likely to jump gaps and that goes along with the next way we've seen ESCs fry. Another way these ESCs fry if they get a direct short. So now the, the, what this will look like is you see the copper actually ripped up, you get your flames, you get you know the cracked boards, you get the black, you see the caps being removed, something along those lines. 
What's happening there is you're getting a direct lipo short. So either a cap went bad or two things touched or the board hit and tweaked and twisted. Because keep in mind these layer, these, there's four layers of boards in there. The positive and the negative run really close. So if you twist it just right, it can touch and short out. If you modified or cut your ESC, this is more likely to happen. And along the lines we just talked about 6S, 6S is more likely to jump the gaps. So if you look at our ESCs, our original bolts, um, another way this happens too is if, they're, um, if, the, if you got a solder ball on something and it bridges to multiple things together. Our original bolts, we had some capacitors here, but we removed them, our, our bolt 32s, because people were actually getting you know, solder bridging these two things and um, actually causing shorts. So another thing that's ha also happened is if you input too much power in here too quick, which BL Heli 32 seems to have a little bit of an issue with, which I think they fixed in some of the later versions, but it made these ESCs more likely to fry. What happened is you plug in your battery and it would charge all these capacitors very quickly. It pulled so much power that it actually was too much power for the traces to handle and it would pop the traces. So this can also happen in flight. A lot of ESCs I've seen, they actually burn up in flight because they're pulling too much power and their traces just are not rated for that kind of power. Uh, it's a shame because a lot of ESCs and a lot of like the race wire and things like that I've seen just aren't rated for the power that these guys are pushing out. And so that's causing these things to uh, basically burn up. If you look here, we have these pads and people probably wonder what the heck they're for. They're actually giving us higher power rails so things like that won't happen. Um, we're putting lots of capacitors on here to keep the voltage flowing as well. But it's important that you have a nice, thick, heavy, as you see, this one's super heavy compared to some of the other ESCs, um, PCB, which gives the power a, a lot of ways to actually uh, travel and keep from these kind of shorts from happening. Uh, one of the ways, ways we modified this to make it more bulletproof is we actually rated these for higher voltage, which actually lowered the capacity of them, um, but it also made it so it charged slower and then it could handle the power better. Uh, BL Heli 32 seems to need this more in BL Heli S, so our, you know, the very first batch, the very few of them, were more likely to have issues with 6S uh, because of uh, these type of things. Um, so there's not much you can do about this besides maybe get ESCs that are more rated for the power. You know, probably some of the ESCs will work for just about any combinations. You know, if you're running 4S, you know, low KV motors, just about any ESC is going to work. But as you're pushing your limits, especially going to 6S, the ESCs are really going to show it. 6S high KV really is going to push your ESCs to the limit. Uh, so it's important to get ESCs rated for it. Um, and there's not a whole lot of them out there that can really handle high KV high power. I mean, I would only use our ESCs for that because I've seen most of the other ESCs not handle it very well. Okay, so our ESC, our new design, actually takes this into account. You notice our new ESC is a lot lighter. Um, it doesn't seem as complex because we've done a lot of things on it to, you know, prevent this and make it better for this. Um, our FETs are actually put right over the pads in a special way where they're directly connected. This gives us a short path. We don't need to run these heavy routes to get the power to them and we're gonna assure maximum power delivery. This should be the most powerful ESC we've always tested, or sorry, this should be the most powerful ESC we've ever tested. One of the reasons is because of the way we've placed the FETs directly over the pads. The size of the FETs and the power of the FETs has also helped us be able to pull this off. Another thing we've done is we've added a certain amount of capacitors but it's made to actually use one external capacitor with the internal ones. This allows us to make it smaller and lighter as well as provide the power delivery we need without having to risk the traces having too many issues. Now the capacitor will be closer to the battery leads, the external one, which will help keep the power stable through the whole range. We've also done a few other things where the capacitor is in the center, they have less interference, and also the trace of the main power goes directly to the FETs, which goes directly to the pads with the shortest path as possible. So this ESG should have a design which actually should make it one of the best on the market, if not the best on the market. All right, so hopefully you've learned some things that fry your ESC and maybe some ways to prevent it. One of the first things you wanna do is make sure when you're plugging the ESCs, make sure none of the pins are bent. Uh, test with a smoke stopper if you can, just to make sure they don't fry. Hot glue those connectors so they don't come out, just put a little drop of hot glue on them. Uh, that should help with that. The next thing you can do is you can solder a ground wire between the ESC 
and the flight controller. This gives one solid ground path no matter what happens to that connector, so the electricity has some place to dissipate if one of those connections become disconnected. Another thing you want to do is mount your ESC in a very soft mounted fashion. That prevents if the frame tweaks or whatever, it doesn't actually twist the board, which can make the pads come in contact. Uh, the fourth thing that you should do is cover your ESC when you're soldering. So solder blobs don't go anywhere on the ESC. They shouldn't. Uh, sometimes they're so small you can't even see them and you have a little bit of solder just kind of moving around on the ESC that can at any moment strike and short out your ESC. Another thing you can do is just mount your ESC in such a way where it gets adequate cooling. What I recommend is you, when using the gummies, put two O-rings between it, put two O-rings underneath it, so it still has the air is moving through the ESC, keeping it cool, which is also gonna allow your ESC to last longer. Also, don't run packs back to back to back. Give those FETs a little time to cool down. When I'm doing very high speed runs, I usually take it into the car, hold the air conditioner on it, cool those FETs back off before I do the next run, because I'll actually have desyncs uh, and things of that nature. Another thing you can do is make sure you run high quality motors. The higher the KV and the cell count, the, the higher the quality the motors need to be. Don't use the thin dual stranded wire, use some of the thicker wire, make sure it has good coatings, make sure it's a well built motor. That's gonna save your ESCs. Remember the money you save on your ESCs, the, or remember the money you save on your motors actually may end up killing your ESC and costing you more money in the long run. Uh, that's that's about it. Please like, subscribe, push that little bell for notifications for my next video. If you have any questions, ask me in the comments and you know discuss amongst yourselves. Let me know if I've missed any ways that you've seen ESCs being killed. And let me know if you have any tips that maybe help everyone else out to prevent from frying the ESCs as well.